Joining us this week on the channel is one of the biggest names in road racing. It is Lee Johnston. And this interview was recorded before the news of the MCUI's announcement that road racing in Northern Ireland has been cancelled. So if there's talk of the Northwest 200, it was prior to the news breaking. Enjoy the interview, folks. Welcome to the channel and yeah, you're a busy man at the minute. Um, <laughs> preparations for 2023 are well underway. Um, a lot of our followers will know you, especially from your YouTube channel now, especially. Um, you're growing the sport a lot and we've seen in recent weeks the new additions to your 2023 lineup. So you've got the Honda Fireblades from Glen Irwin last season. So how do you feel about that? Is it exciting? Yeah, really good. I um, think the first day, yeah, changing bikes is a thing. People sort of from the outside think, oh, yeah, you literally go and buy the bike, but they don't see of all the bikes and spares and everything we have to sell, first of all, to make room for these and then even generate the money for that to happen. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of stuff has to happen for that to fall in place. And even though now we've picked the bikes up, we're still ordering loads more spares and getting everything because you can't go to a race that happens once a year and not be like uh really well equipped to for the worst possible scenario. Do you know what I mean? Things breaking or someone maybe knock you off in the middle of the roundabout, do you know what I mean? The bike fall over and break things and you don't have them. So especially with the, the race schedule on a Saturday, you just can't afford afford that. So yeah, there's a lot of uh not exactly exciting work going on right now, but yeah, all the ordering and invoicing and stuff like that. But yeah, I think it has to be done. So um, someone has to do it. Yeah. And going back to Honda machinery, you last rode a Honda in 2018 and it was kind of unlucky the way COVID fell for you with the BMWs with Ice Court because you got the newer model at the end of 2019. Yeah. And then pandemic hits and you don't really get to ride it for two years essentially was that a, a, a problem going into last season yeah as such because we bought the bike and we ran it at macau in that year and literally first i literally jumped on the bike and we hadn't done anything and i think we finished fourth maybe in the race or something like that so we were right up at the front and it was just a super stock bike i was sure thought yeah this is going to be really good got loads of potential and then we did nothing for two years and i think that's what sort of bit us in the ass a little bit this time at the turn 22 at the tt because we hadn't used the bm and then we had little gremlins like electric problems and different things so um yeah that made it for, and then i've sort of made a point of that this year i'm going to try and ride the hondas a little bit more than just sitting and doing bsb and then expecting them to be even though they've come as built bikes we're changing things on them and stuff to suit me so um yeah we're gonna we're gonna put a conscious effort into using them more rather than just on the roads yeah no that's good because thinking back when i have a memory of you and for road racing i remember you riding honda's 2014 you rode one and then yeah. bmw was that spell uh, where it was the bike to be on in 2015 for example you on the bm yeah. super stock was arguably one of your best bikes and then going back to oh honda machinery and your team with the factory team do you think it's going to take it's much to get adapt to in terms of you know changing from bm to honda no i don't it's not like sort of yeah i think a bike's a bike really the seat <laughs> position and the bars and stuff but this this day and age you can buy that many things like my seats are different and stuff to suit me and my bars are different and you can, you can almost take the same measurement from bike and get in position and stuff so um yeah i think once you do a tech two on the bike it, it starts to feel like yours and then it's, it's pretty easy so um yeah i'm looking i'm looking forward to riding and i literally just sat on them i think once yeah. or twice to check the body work and stuff so um yeah i'm looking forward to, to going to testing and speed and after a few days actually very nice. And then priority will be Super Sport, I assume, with the the R6. It's the bike that, you know, for, for 2019, when you, you know, rebranded as Ice Court, it was immediately the bike that took you to, you know, Northwest wins, TT win, those epic battles around the Ulster with Peter Hickman, which mm -hmm. I know you won't be too uh, happy about, but they were just unbelievable races. And then, of course, British Championship. Maybe a lot of people don't really know that, you know, 
you're not slow around a circuit either. You're very fast, mate, for just yeah, a, a, for a, a road racer. racer. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I think obviously that is my, see that as probably being my best chance um, at winning another TV. Um, but yeah, the plan this year is not entered on as far as how many BSBs we do. I, I've got a little bit of a desire to do some more road racing. So whether it's some of the road races that are in Europe and okay. just serve for a change of scenery. So you just sort of get in this rat race of doing the same thing, British Championship road racing, and that's it. So I've um, yeah, I've been looking into doing some of them and seeing if we can actually tie a deal together with the organisers and get out there and see some of the fans out in Europe. And that's cool. it's cool now because I can see it as going and doing a vlog and letting everybody this side of the pond see exactly. what that's actually like and then maybe get some more fans and stuff out there so it helps the sport um both ways i think because you see we see a lot of european people over at the this and the tt so yeah. it'd be nice to sort of go back to maybe germany or some of the other tracks that there is out there and um yeah matra and finland and things like that i think that's it'd be awesome, quite cool man. to go and go and do and, and show yeah. people what it's... you've done in matra before haven't you I've done Froberg, not Fro not any yeah. of the other ones. Yeah, yes. and I, I absolutely loved it, to be honest. And like um, Neil, my mechanic, it's always on YouTube, but he was in his element because all they did was drink beer and eat sausages. So <laughs> he thought it was he thought it was brilliant. But um, the, the track it was really 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 well run event. The track was really good. The the racing was good. The fans were crazy. There was quite a lot. There were maybe twenty thousand people there. So it was yeah, yeah. mega. That's great, man. No, I think that. Um... Like you say with the YouTube, and we'll touch on that uh, in a bit. It's uh, you know, you're opening up, like you say, people this side. So in the UK, they're playing like that's in Europe. Why don't we go to that? Yeah. And it's like, yeah. it's such an an easy, you know, it's, I'll say it's easy for YouTubers, but what you have and the platform you've built, it just brings more eyes in general for the sport. And that's why I think that you <laughs> see a lot more people, like riders and such, who have someone filming with them and like you know creating content but this the standout thing with yourself it's it's the authenticity of it and i think that's what people love about it like you say with neil and stuff it's like a running joke always he hates the camera it's like like people love that and you always see it on social media especially like get more neil on and you've made the t-shirts yeah. at the tt and stuff <laughs> and yeah i think that um what you've built is like just this i don't know it's it's real i think that's it yeah i think the, the the funny thing so all this sort of started as a joke like christian my partner said oh you should do it do it I, was like, oh, I don't know and then we did and i had no clue about videoing and christy had no clue about edit it was like it started off rough and i'm not saying it's not rough now but <laughs> a lot of people started going oh yeah we love this this it, there's like a i don't know what type of this is type all the type of video that we know <laughs> nothing about and we sort of thought, oh, well, we've accidentally created something that's a style. And it was because that we had no clue what we were doing and all that. So we just sort of kept with it. She's obviously got loads better at that. And I've got marginally better at maybe <laughs> holding the camera. And um, yeah, it seems to be working okay. And people are, in, as long as people are enjoying watching it, I'll keep doing it. Do you know what I mean? If we, if we start and people stop like, not wanting to watch it, then I'll just stop. But, and the funny thing, like, we've had some decent companies come on and like, oh, we want to sponsor the channel and stuff. And I'm like, I'm politely trying to not turn it into that sort of thing. I want to, yeah. like, I, my racing's my job and the sponsors in that are part of the job and everything. And if I can right. give them some coverage on the back of that with the YouTube and then give the fans something for free that they can come see, that was what it all started with. So. Um, sometimes uh, something will come along where I think, oh, cool, the fans can get something out of this, then I'll probably I'll commit to doing something. But right now, I'm not going to stand there and tell you to drink a certain type <laughs> of bottle of water, do you know yeah. what I mean? Just because, I, and I, I wouldn't do it myself, do you know, so I'm very cautious of that sort of happening. It's the channel of one, it's real and, and that, but obviously if someone drops up the big wad of cash and goes can you do this then yeah my, my, no my, my, <laughs> yeah, my morals just go out the window straight away but yeah that's the that's the plan going forward so far anyway that was cool and i think it, it helped a lot last year um when it came back to the road racing you were obviously doing youtube and adapting back to road racing they give the fans a kind of an insight of what you went through and going back to last year it yeah. was kind of up and down your season you know northwest was 
I'd say it was, it was a lot more shit than there was good. I think. <laughs> well, the win the race around the northwest. I mean, that's that's a great start to the year, and it just kind of the TT came, and I don't know, mate. You, you can yeah. explain it better than me. It was. It wasn't. Yeah, I think that that's the hard part is when things are going good, it's easy to vlog. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, look at me, I'm great, I'm winning. It's like, yeah, this is easy, but when you know to swear on this. Yeah, yeah, you can swear away. Yeah. When um when things are fucking hard, it, the last thing you want to do is sit down. It's I suppose it's a little bit like I'm not comparing this in the medical term, but like say if you were going to council, it's hard to talk to someone, do you know what I mean? So you imagine like on your worst day, something like you work really hard for and it doesn't happen happens like my eyes at the tt like shit things yeah and then sitting there and then telling everybody about it you're like yeah I'm all, i don't i literally don't want to leave the motor home never mind tell 20 yeah. or 30 or forty thousand people on a camera so but then that's you can't pick one without the other it's like saying something to someone on social media and then not expecting a reaction yeah. you're if you're gonna put yourself out there you have to do both I suppose. It's, it's, I know what you mean. It's like the analogy of, like, say someone's like a boxer or something and they've just been knocked out, and you get someone yeah. after the fight going, Well, what happened there? You're like, Yeah. You, you've yeah, seen you what happened. Lads. Yeah, they're yeah. already on their arse. You know, exactly. No I think that's the. And we're quite protected in our sport, you know what I mean? Because there's only certain journalists and everything, and we can choose who we talk to and everything. Yeah. So doing this, like, and, and I, I, it wouldn't be fair if I just went, oh, well, I won at the Northwest, so I'll video that and a shit TT. Yeah. So I'm just not going to video that. It's not fair. You have to, have to take the road. And and honestly, the, the support I got out of the harder times are, is probably far more than. I was going to say, it, it's, and that's why I think it's so successful and why it's grown your channel. It's so authentic. You don't yeah. protect of what you've went through. You know, you've even talked in the past about sort of the. The, the physical side of what you've you you've went through sort of illnesses and stuff and it's like people really respond to that and i think that that's what makes it so um yeah authentic and yeah. i think people will think, enjoy the highs it's hard. More, you know? i try and to be like that even on instagram because like, I, I know i've got a good life do you know what i mean and moaning about sitting in traffic coming to the workshop <laughs> and stuff is as it's a bit of a joke really but I think nowadays, like especially younger kids, like the world is so full of shit, like Instagram and Twitter and all these things and TikTok or whatever. Nobody lives, you know, like everybody is shit there. So yeah. I think if you see someone that, God forbid, you actually look up to and they're going, there's shit, this is hard. You know, there's a lot more bad times in motorbike racing than there is good, good times. You know what I mean? yeah. so, no, I get it, mate. It's, it's... When you, you think about last year, I think the only thing that was really encouraging for the TT was the the Super Twin, the Aprilia. And yeah. I, I think that is it's such a cool bike, so it is. And w what are the expectations for that this year? Is it coming on and are you going to add more, I don't know, top end? Because that seemed to be the thing yeah. that struggled with. Yeah, it was struggling. It, it was like realistically, the, the, we were racing on. 12 or 13,000 pound bike when everything else was 35, yeah. you know, with development costs and everything. And we just didn't have time. So, yeah, we've put some more money into it this year, developed it. We're in the process of doing that. It's nowhere near ready yet. Hopefully, sort of become March time, March and April, it should be ready then to test. And so um, it needs a big jump. We've been helped with the rules because it was capped on weight. It was like 10 mm -hmm. kilos over weight and things like that. Um, I think this year, yeah. So hopefully, Hopefully we'll be in a genuine chance of winning or on the podium in the TT because last year we got lucky with, with Michael and um, yeah. Jamie Coward and I'd be the first to admit that. I mean, I'm not going to stand and take praise for, for something. If they were in the race still, we wouldn't have been on the podium. Um, but yeah, the, the bike's got loads of potential. It's just trying to get that get that out of it and putting all the work in now to do that. I think you, you persevered with it, the Aprilia. I think Hickman went round the northwest on it and then he yeah. just dumped it. He was like... I'll get to the TT yeah. and run a pattern, and I actually think in the long term it will benefit like yourself because you've been on it from the start, and yeah. you will see more people. I think this year definitely using it, and I think there's, I think it's a really nice, it's cool looking. It's, that's why I like it. it looks right. different. It looks like a super sport a wee bit. I think. Yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice aesthetically looking. It's a nice bike. So, but yeah, there's a lot of work to do to it. Hopefully, if we could. We could get like that was their best ever result of the TT, I yeah. think. But um, to get a win for for a brilliant at the TT would be really nice. hopefully, hopefully we can do that. Yeah, yeah, hopefully they start paying you. 
So this yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> if they're watching this, we want money. Yeah, <laughs> and then just going to the classic TT. I think the the bike you had last year, the RC forty five. It just like springs back memories of Joey Dunlop and like the vlogs you done last year on it, and even recently, you know, the last one you done that was looking at the the get the Yukawa uh, endurance bike, and it's like. People yeah, so that, that's that's what we're going to try and use. So basically, we we literally went, same thing, that bike sitting at my boss, house and we literally, basically, we had a 250 all ready to go. Then the rules were, oh, yeah, you can run an RC45. So my boss was like, all right, let's do that. God, we had nothing sorted. Like, we'd send wheels off to get crack tested. We couldn't get springs for the suspension. Like, yeah. there were so many things. The fact that that bike did... We had a bit of a bet on me and him that he said it won't do four laps. And everyone's like, oh. so I went steady, like, for three laps, literally nursed the bike around. And the last lap, I thought, oh, I wonder if, if it's got a bit of potential. Um, so we went on a bit fast. Oh, this will this will actually be good. So now, like, already he's obsessed. Like, he's, he's got quite a collection of classic bikes. So he's no real interest in my modern yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, he bears the bills. But, like, he's bringing up, oh, get this for the RC45. So... Yeah, we went and he's bought that other bike that was in the vlog. We picked it up yesterday. So that's going to be like the main chassis and everything for this year going forward. And he's ordered loads of other bits, wheels, suspension and all sorts of stuff. So yeah, hopefully we're going to be a bit more organized. Oh, if we could get anywhere near the front of the race or on the podium, yeah, it would be it would be amazing. Because that's a genuine 750. Like all them ZXRs are bored out. Yeah. All sorts of modern bits on. So we want it to look the And the amount of people that see it that oh we haven't like the last time one was there it was philip mccallan on it that's right yeah that's that's what that's what all these people were seeing and um yeah to look at it's a beautiful thing so yeah that that's the plan for for the classic tt if we can bring that and then bring the 250 as well and then get them all done in the same colors they're just um it's just the classic tt is just like if you're like a real nostalgia head and you love like older bike it is definitely the place to go so it is and finally just on the british championship do you think uh now that jack kennedy's gone did you can... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i think everyone yeah, was I've, kind uh, of breathing actually, a... um, i give martin a few quid sponsorship just to get him up to the super <laughs> class to get him out of the way um no like me funny thing is me and jack raised each other since we were 16 sure. and when we were then like we were it was like like for like where one would win the other one would win and then i sort of veered off to the road racing and then back and he stayed in British Genic. People forget he's I don't know, is he four time British Super champion? He's unbelievable, like yeah. yeah. So he's had a he's had a awesome career. But then I chose to leave, so it's up to me. Do you know what I mean? Not saying I would have beaten if I had a stay or anything like that, but um I'm glad I chose I did and um but to be able to come back, I think the biggest thing is I get so much enjoyment out of being able to come back and be competitive. Do you know what I mean? Because there's, yeah. there's only a few road racers that can sort of do both. So it's not like a complete waste of time, money and effort for everybody to go and us ride around. And do you know what I mean? We're there at the front on the podium most weekends and trying to win races. So um, yeah, I do enjoy it. Like I said, I don't know what's going to happen this year. We're still trying to... It's just so expensive to do the full season of BSB. But if that all falls into place, we're going to do as much of them as possible. Yeah. And then um, whatever road races don't clash and stuff like that as well. Do you think, finally, do you think that the Ulster Grand Prix um, will make a return? It's like, it's been teased I, so many times, you know, it's like, yeah. it's back, it's off, it's back, it's off. W- would you go so. back and write it, you know? Yeah, I, I've said this, like, I, I'm not had any qualms about, like, they owe me some 10,000 quid from before. And um, I, someone has rang me and I said, yeah, I would go back because it's some. I just think they've got me kneeled over because I remember going as a kid and I just yeah. lo- I love the place so much and I love going there as a kid and I just want the right people to, to run it and us to go and put a show on and, and, and support it. And it's just, it's just so sad with what happened and all that. But yeah, I, I would go back and I think they know that and so would Pete and because all the top riders love the track yeah. so they've it's an amazing they know that's what they have on everyone but I think it just needs to happen right and everybody get lucky because me getting my money's never ever going to happen you know what I mean but yeah 
I think going forward for the sporting stuff, yeah, I would, and, and that's something I would love to see happen. Hopefully, it does. Hopefully, it's it is the best. Well, I was born fifteen yeah. minutes from it, and it's like it's like my it's like my happy place. Man, I just loved it, and the fact that it's been away for since twenty nineteen, and the way it ended, you know, it was probably the best year of racing. Well, I can yeah, remember. Not for me. Not for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For, no, I, I totally agree. Do you know what I said? Like, me and Peter are good mates. And I said that after. I was like, do you know what? I, if I was here, I paid my 10 quid or 15 quid, I'd have been fucking happy with what I'd seen today. So that's that's your job at the end of the day. Go on. So. But that's pretty much it, Lee. Thank you very much for... Yeah come on the channel and do you want to plug your youtube channel at all or no no i said well it's just my name if people want to go and watch some average content then feel free it's uh is are more than welcome but no cool thank you very much for ha having me on here uh i really enjoyed it and um yeah hopefully see you at racetracks too